many of the Western countries spoke in the Security Council, spoke about the right of Israel to defend itself, especially the U.S. They repeated that three times. Now, does Iran have the same right? Was it attacked or not by Israel? Was it its sovereignty was violated or not by Israel? Why they don't have the same right like all other countries I think to defend themselves? Every member state has the same rights under international law and the same responsibilities. It will not come as a surprise to you, and this may be an honest assessment, but that different member states interpret international law differently. Sonia. Sorry, I'm, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, it's, I'm sorry. Mr. No problem, sorry. sorry. Um, <sighs> the Secretary General um, has made clear that his only power is his voice, and he has elevated uh, this week uh, three times. I wonder, is that, uh, has he used it privately to lead any diplomatic effort, efforts to stop what is unraveling? I mean, the, the messages that he gives publicly are the same ones that he gives privately and that his representatives on the ground, uh, whether it's Tor Venislan, uh, whether it's um, Janine Hennis Plaschert in Lebanon, all give. And they're continuing their intense contacts with all the parties involved. Stefano. Thank you, Stefan. About the situation in UNIFIL, we heard what um, Secretary General said at the Security Council, that they will stay, and, and what you just said about the flag is still there. Uh, but they arrived there as a peacekeepers. If there is not any, at all any more peace there, what, what, they are, you know, what, what are they, they doing they, there? They because have... usually, that, usually we learn that the UN will never send peacekeepers when there is a fight going on. They have to wait for peace, and then they keep the peace. In this case, the peace is not there anymore. I think you're, you're making an observation, which I will not question. Uh, what I can tell you is that the peacekeepers, the UN Blue Helmets, UNIFIL, uh, almost nine, more than 9,000 of them have a very clear mandate from the Security Council on behalf of the international community. They continue to implement it to the best of their ability. Um, they continue to be a, a, we believe, a force of deterrence. And they also uh, provide a, a critical, um, I would say, uh, communications framework uh, where the, our, as you know, our UNIFIL commander speaks both to the Lebanese Armed Forces and to the Israeli uh, Defense Forces. Obviously, they're also reporting on what is going on. We spoke to, we spoke to one of my colleagues there a few hours ago. He said there continues to be intense, uh, intense shelling. Um, but they are, and they are constantly adjusting their, their operational posture. Uh, to ensure their own safety, while at the same time implementing their their mandate, and I, you know, I said it yesterday, but it needs to be said again because the message from the troop contributing countries has been very clear: is that they're sticking with this mission, and we are extremely appreciative of the fact that they are sticking with this mission. Just a quick follow-up: um, the troop that contributing. Someone is uh, has been suggesting that the rules of engagement of the of, of the UNIFIL uh, should be you know enlarged. I mean, should be made. I don't know, changed by the Security Council. In what, what way? There is some proposal that the the actual rule of engagement of those soldiers they are there. I don't know, maybe. But in the what way, way can defend themselves if they Look, start I mean, somebody start to shoot at them? I mean, some pe peacekeepers are always allowed to defend themselves. Obviously, if the if the rules of engagements change, then they will change. Uh, Senor, uh, Steph, again on the personal non grata declaration. You said there were no legal effects, but the fact is that. The Israeli foreign minister, he banned Mr. Guterres from entering the country. So there are some legal effects. Well, no, listen, we're, we're not looking at it in a legal, <coughs> through a legal lens for a number of reasons, including the one I, I gave you. And what is, let, let's, let's be honest, what is clear that any secretary general, whenever he, he so far just he, uh, goes to a country, 
It is with the, at the invitation of that country. So that's just a basic principle. So you can, um, uh, you can do the math on how we see this. Uh, 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 yes, go ahead. Follow up. At the same time, last week, Mr. Netanyahu came to mm -hmm. New York and he brought with him 40, 50 people inside the, mm -hmm. the General Assembly, right? So there is no correspondence between the UN uh, behavior and Israel behavior. I, I didn't hear a question mark there. Mm -hmm. uh, before we go back to, is there any questions on the screen? Because I don't have my phone. Yes, Mike. Firstly, Steph, you are forever persona grata at Shea Wagenheim, anytime. Um, you went out of Thank there. Thank you. Uh, yeah. two, questions, two questions for you, please indulge me. Uh, when the Secretary General says the UNIFIL flag or the UN flag still flies, does he mean that there's just an outright refusal to move the peacekeepers or not in this particular situation? Or what, what exactly does that mean? It means exactly what it means, uh, is that uh, the IDF had requested uh, UNIFIL to leave several positions near the blue line, uh, saying it was in the interest of, their, of the peacekeepers' safety and security. Uh, a decision was, was made, uh, both, I would say, operationally and politically, to stay. Uh, we will continue to stay while at the same time assessing our posture, and the security of the of peacekeepers, uh, I would say, on an hourly basis. Second question for you: In terms of the framework of 1701, I mean, the, the state of Lebanon has had 18 18 years to implement that resolution. Uh, I mean, you and, and John Pierre Lacroix kind of said the same thing that it's up to the parties. Well, if if the Lebanese government won't do it, and Hezbollah is obviously in no Russia has no motive to implement it. I mean, what's the other party left to implement? Look, uh, di 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 diplomacy uh, takes time. We want to see the guns silenced, and we want to see a return to diplomacy. Uh, Last question. Can yes, I get sir. one more? Yes, you may. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't want to make unclear what you said was made clear this morning, but just in a general sense. I mean, if, if I woke up from a midday nap yesterday and read the Secretary General's statement, I would have no idea that Iran fired 180 ballistic missiles. And when you go back to what started this whole... A brouhaha between Israel and Secretary General back in October when he said there's no justification for the massacre and five seconds later went into a five minute justification for it, or at least interpreted that way by many. My wife often tells me if you're clear the first time, you won't have to clear it up later. I mean, is there an issue with the Secretary General and, and just hesitancy or, or dancing around politically and trying to be clear the first time rather than just in identifying the problem? Well, perhaps we can invite your wife to ask the questions and my wife to answer them. <laughs> um, but the, um, listen, it's, I think is in, in your preamble, uh, you, you said you did not want to make less clear what the Secretary General said. I think the Secretary General was, was clear uh, and the tweet was a release within the context of what everybody knew and what the news was, but I think his comments today were very clear. Sylvia. The, the, the Lebanese government said today and yesterday they will implement Resolution 1701. Uh, did you get the message? How about UNIFIL now? Is uh, he continuing the mandate? Will continue? Yeah, I mean, UNIF is it, UNIFIL is, is it going to change uh, Look, within this uh, 1701 the, resolution? The, the, the we would love to see, we, we would love to see the parties actually implement 1701 the secu the unifil's mandate has not changed to my the best of my knowledge given that it's a security council that would change it so their work continues under the present uh, circumstances the same the same rule of engagement the, the rules the of engagements rules are, of set, are, are set out, unless the Security Council decides to change something. Benno. Thank you. Um, I have a follow-up to the incident at the press conference with uh, German Foreign Minister Baerbock. I know you just heard about yeah. it 20 now, maybe 30 minutes ago. but yeah, still. It seems like an hour ago now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can you confirm, though, that this Russian journalist was stripped his UN badge? Uh, I don't believe he was stripped of his UN badge. I believe his status was changed. But again... 
That's just what I know in the last 24 minutes. When you minutes. say his status was Well, changed. because you know you have different access to this building. You have resident correspondents, non-resident correspondents. So he still has access that's, to the building, you think? That's my understanding. Okay. But um, again, uh, I should not speak on things I just understand. Okay. So, yeah, I know you just heard of it. I was there, but I would really appreciate if if you could clarify that later. Yeah, I, or so. I, yes. Okay. Thank you. Deji and then Abdel Hamid. Yeah, just a quick follow-up. How follow about saying it's obvious? Just to follow up on the banning of the, the entry of Secretary General to Israel, does that mean that the Secretary General cannot go to Gaza if he wants to? I think you all know that uh, in order to get to, to Gaza, it does require uh, clearance by Israeli authorities. Abdel Hamid. Thank you again. Uh, do member states have the luxury to pick and choose which Security Council resolution is binding or not. Now they are shedding tears about 1701 only. When there are many other resolutions, they don't, even Thomas, uh, Miss Linda Thomas Greenfield stood after adopting resolutions uh, 27, 25, she said it's not binding. And now it is 1701. They don't mention 242338, 426, 478, 480. I mean, Abdel Hamid, you are as much, if not more, of a student of this organization than I am. You know very well that, from the Secretary General's point of view, uh, every member state should respect international law. Every member state should uh, respect international humanitarian law. Every member state should abide by Security Council resolutions and, and others. Whether they do it or not is something that the m journalists need to hold them to account. Uh, Benno, then Benny, and then bye-bye. I'm very sorry for the back and forth. I forgot one question about the same incident I just asked about. And Ambassador Nebenzia told me there was an assault by a German individual towards that Russian correspondent. I would like to know if you know anything about an assault or can like uh, in, get in some In the last 90 seconds, I have not been more enlightened on the, the, but I will try to do my best of my ability to respect your questions and harvest an answer for I you. I feel respected, thanks. Could, could you also send it out to all of us because some uh, of us will be reporting nah, on it? I'll just do it to Beno. No, please, okay. all of us, all of us. <laughs> yes, of course, of course, <laughs> of course. One. Share, we share the love. Yes, Benny. On that note of hilarity. Um, so you say that the IDF, after the IDF said uh, that uh, warned UNFL to uh, move from certain spots, that the UNFL for now has decided to stay so two questions on that. First of all, does that endanger the Unifil forces? And secondly, do you recall any uh, similar incident when Hezbollah told Unifil to move from one place or to ignore one incident? I, I can't answer the last one. I, I'm not. A, I don't have the information. Uh, second, uh, I can. I, I have no doubt that you ask questions that you know the answer to, Benny. Um, so your first question, um, look, being in the midst of a conflict zone is dangerous, right? We assess hour by hour the posture uh, and the safety of our peacekeepers, both uniformed and civilians. Thank you.